Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. Thank you for stopping by to check out what I have on my channel today and I hope you're all doing well. This is a little Christmas card keepsake book that I put together. I was tired of having them elasticized and in stacks and when you think about how much time we spend making cards and that they are a form of art and that in years past as they piled up I just couldn't keep them and travel with them in all of their messiness. Um, so s how many have I thrown out? They were just beautiful and if nothing else they're great inspiration for making our own cards and certainly if somebody made one for us we would like a place to keep them. So I actually followed a tutorial that Country Craft Creations put up on New Year's Eve and I will leave the link below. I am not coming up with this configuration on my own. She did a great job of taking her time to show you all the nuances of this. She did a lot of flaps and flip folds and things like that, but I really wanted one that was just simple. Put it together, get your cards in, and call it done so that it doesn't become another thing sitting on the shelf waiting for me to tackle it, right? So I will leave the link below to her very detailed tutorial. I am going to leave a, a tutorial of a short, shorter version and the way that I put it together. If you want to stick by for a couple of minutes and watch, uh, I've narrowed it down a little bit because I did not put all those extras in. But if you want extras, you should go check out her video. So I used Heartfelt Creations paper, and this also gave me the opportunity to utilize my papers and have another means of seeing them. There are a number of the Christmas releases in this book, so I get to see lots of the Christmas over the years from Heartfelt. And um, I think this was their Snow Kisses that has the adorable deer that I decided to use for not only the front, but as well as the back. And actually, it has to be Festive Holly because the Festive Holly collection had these beautiful cardinals and that wheel. I could be wrong, but as I said, a lot of the papers are in here. And the way that this is bound is really simple. That's why it was easy to put it together. It doesn't have to be thick because I'm not putting tons of layers and flowers and ribbons and all that in there. So I'm going to show you how I put the whole thing together and then you finish off with this piece of paper that just wraps around, glue it down, and voila, your book is together. It really is a great go-to for a keepsake book if you want to not mess around and just get it done. I put some um, lace, some red lace along that edge where this paper folded over on the front and the back. And I have some of my poinsettias that I used um, during some card making this past Christmas on the corners and clustered into the back of these pretty poinsettias. I have the Silent Night die from Oh Holy Nights, just a little Merry Christmas. And I will tell you, I messed up on the video, so if you don't want to do it this way, then don't. You should, of course, put the ribbon underneath here when you put the cover paper. I didn't, but I did catch myself in time to put it under here when I was putting that last piece of paper because that's the last thing that you do. And then of course it's tied up. I won't be able to show you every page because some of them have pictures in them of people because a lot of us send cards with pictures of family members and stuff and they haven't decided they want to be on YouTube so I can't really show you that. And she does on Country Craft Creations show you putting in the cards and the different ways that you can cut them and layer them and all that stuff. But for myself I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough and then we'll start the tutorial. This was just a tag that I received and I thought it was beautiful and I glued it only on the top so that I could lift it up and see who gave it to me. A beautiful card here. This was a cutout. My pastor likes to send everybody something and of course he's not going to spend a lot of money on such an endeavor as important as it is to 
reach out to everyone. He wants to be careful budget-wise, so he prints them out and he had this beautiful little setting with all the animals and baby Jesus and um, what he has to say. And I, I thought that this card right here with the three wise men on the other side was beautiful. And as you can see, there's Heartfelt Creations paper. This is from some of the recent. I think that's the Oh Holy Night. And then the way I have this washi tape so you can't see the name of the family. This is a flip out card. It came that way. More of the paper in the background. And here is a handmade card I received from someone. Some of these I have glued just like this so that I can read the back. This is washi taped so that I can lift it up and see who gave it to me. That's actually from our post lady who we adore. And uh, this is just so nice to be able to see your beautiful cards. Remember the people who you uh, give cards to and receive cards from year in and year out. And to be able to see your beautiful papers as well and have them not sitting there um, with the whole savey thing going on. <laughs> but to actually get in and use them. And this card took, I didn't want to cut this or do anything to this because it's a gorgeous piece of artwork. And you can match up your cards with your colors. There's all kinds of pocket things you can do and stuff. I'm going to pass these because those are actually pictures. And so as you can see, I use, and I have some spare pages left in case I find any of the cards laying around, which you usually do. And that's it. So if you would like to see how to do this, as I said, my tutorial is missing the proper way to put the ribbon on and it is a little bit more concise, but if you'd like to see the other video, the link's down below. We're going to start out by cutting two pieces of 9 inch by 6.5 inch chipboard. So I have 12 inch sheets of chipboard here and I'm just going to use my cutter to uh, cut them down into two pieces of nine by six. Now the measurements for this project work out for the most part pretty well as far as not wasting any 12 by 12 anythings but when it comes to the chipboard I did have to use two pieces to create um, both of these front and back covers because they do extend past the six by six inch mark and make sure that you put a good amount of glue onto your chipboard when you're laying it onto your 12 by 12 paper that can be any color. This is your base color. This is what's going to actually cover the front and back and then you're going to decorate with your designer papers or whatever you want to over this. So it doesn't all have to be perfectly neat but you do want it very sealed down and you want to try to keep any bubbles and bumps from occurring so I'm going to take some time to put the chipboard onto the 12 by 12. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered. It really doesn't matter how wide the edges are. Of course you can take your time and be more perfect with this but I just want to get these books assembled. I'm not selling them. They're for myself and once I have some security in that it's very well glued down I'm cutting off the corners so that we can make professional looking corners. I know, contradictory, right? But you want to try to have your corners be nice and neat. So about an eighth of an inch away, a diagonal cut. Don't cut right to the corner or you'll still end up having your chipboard pop out. Now I'm just going around the edges to loosen up the fibers. So you can take your bone folder and go around the edges and make the fibers a little more loose so that you can bend them and sort of uh, get them ready for the direction that you're going to be sending them in when you glue them down before you actually pick up your glue. So once I get all four of these sides of the paper uh, worked a little bit, I'm going to put glue right along the edge and take it out to the edges as well on the paper that's extended outside the, the side of the chipboard and pushing mostly from the center inward I'm going to try to get this nice and flat. Again, you're going to come over this with designer paper, but even though I'm not selling it and I'm keeping it for myself, I'm doing a, a, a little bit of a good job of making sure that it's sealed down well so that it holds up over the years and doesn't just peel up and become a pain in the neck. Of course, if you're going to sell it, maybe you want to take a little bit more time than I am. And you should do one side, then the opposite side. 
and get that all glued down before you start to deal with the opposite two directions because here you want to make sure that you have your corners tucked in and it's no big deal you just push the little piece of paper that you left on that eighth of an inch inward so that when you fold the flap down it goes inside underneath with the glue and hopefully all said and done you'll end up with a nice clean corner once again I put some glue right on the edge so that the paper will hold closely to the edge and create a nicer cleaner looking crisp edge when the book is all done you will see the edges popping out underneath your designer paper and just use a bone folder or whatever you have your hands whatever you have and uh, wipe up your spare glue so you don't get all sticky and as you can see the papers are not perfectly cut that's okay because this is all going to be covered you're really only concerned with making sure that you have some sort of a surface around all of the edges and in the corners that are going to look nice and neat when you're done and as you can see the fact that we took the time to tuck that little corner edge in gave us a very nice corner looks like a professional book even though it's not so now that I have both of the covers all set to go I'm gonna put those to the side and head to the next part so I'm pretty much just setting up my assembly at this point and I'm going to create my pages so these are the inside base pages eight and a half by six inches are the sizes they're a little bit smaller than the book cover so as to fit in nicely and this is again any color um, you know some fairly sturdy paper because these are your actual pages but don't be picky about it if you're just making this for yourself and worry about spending a lot of money just go ahead and cut your pages as many as you would like into that size and uh, I forget I think I cut like seven or eight pieces and that gave me 14 to 16 pages and that was just out of 12 by 12 so the sizes work up really well because six inches wide perfect for not wasting paper the strips that were left over now I'm gonna cut them into one inch long of course they should be the eight inch length of the pages but these are gonna become the hinges that's why they need to be the same length as the page and then about an inch wide so you take all the scraps that you had from your 12 by 12s cut them into these inch wide strips and then those will become the hinges which I didn't show you scoring straight down the center but you just go to your scoreboard and score right down the center of your hinges and then I'm bending them all over and score and uh, burnishing them now I'm gonna do the inside cover at eight and three fourths by six and fourth but uh, you know go ahead and remeasure yourself how how much do you want on your inside and outside covers I actually did them the same size which turned out a little bit small on the front but again I'm not being too picky about this you just want to have uh, well first you have to decide how much of a border you want when you make your in and outside cover decor and put it on the chipboard covered pieces that we just did so that's what we're doing we're creating the pages or the papers that will go on the outside and the inside of the actual covers of the book and I'm gonna put those to the side and head off to the page covers so the page covers are a little smaller eight and a fourth by five and three fourths because they have to fit inside if you want a border the black pages that we just created and depending on the direction that your uh, designer paper goes in think about how you would like them to lay out in your book this particular one I wanted the top left and the bottom right so I had to manipulate the paper a little to get the cuts and I'm just going to spend a, a few minutes cutting all my page covers down so uh, that I can put those to the side and pretty much work in an assembly type form once I have all of the cuts for all of the parts and that's after that that's just a matter of putting the book together this is a really easy book to put together and as I said it, it's not very wasteful on paper it allows you to use a lot of the different types of papers I'm using heartfelt creations and if you'd like some you can go and check out my store heart uh, huckleberryherbs.com and I have a lot of heartfelt things there now my page is laying in my scoreboard she actually had a great idea in that video to put it lengthwise right up against the edge take your folded hinge glue one side and then uh, glue it down to the top 
lengthwise of your page and take your time wiping off your extra glue and burnishing and making sure the hinge is nice and tight and then once you have this hinge on this particular page you're actually going to make the uh, left inside glued to the, back, the front cover of your book. It's going to put your whole book inside. So once you have it all down you actually want to flip that hinge over. Okay, you're going to put it onto the other side and in a second you'll see me do that. I'm just going to flip the whole darn thing over. This is not what you will do for the whole rest of the book, but for this one piece and when you do the last one, it's a little special. See how I flipped it over to the other side and now I'm going to actually take the time to mark on the opposite side that this is the front and that I need to glue it to the cover. So the fold of the hinge is flipped over onto the other side of the paper and this is the part that will actually glue down inside the book and I have that hinge ready on the right. Here I'm showing you that uh, that's the part that's going to glue down and the hinge that's on the right is the part that we're going to keep working with. So we're going to turn the paper back, push that hinge down and make sure it's nice and flat and then I'm going to come on with my next page and glue up my hinge. When I'm adding the pages I'm trying to be careful to make sure that the bottom right and left corners of the pages are lining up. I'm not so worried about the hinges they all get hidden inside but you do need to make sure that they're nice and glued and stable and sturdy but as you see I'm going to put that down right on top of that hinge try to watch my right and left side. The scoreboard is helping me just a little bit to manipulate the papers and make sure everything's as least wonky as possible and then be very careful that your right and left are good and seal it down. Burnish it. Make sure it's nice and strong. But watch your, your bottom. Uh, that's the edge of the book that you'll see from the outside and that's the part you want to keep as straight and even as possible. Mine is not perfectly even but that's okay. So there's the part that's going to glue down. There's the first um, inside pages and then when I flip this over to the right I'm going to turn it once again and come back with another hinge and then I'm going to glue that hinge onto the top and add another page. And so you just keep going like this until you get as many pages as you would like, trying to keep them all as even as possible. And sooner or later you won't be able to use the scoreboard, but basically once you get going it's just a matter of just repeating the same action over and over. Making sure that you're burnishing the hinge down, come back, add another page by gluing the hinge up and putting the page on top and then add another hinge. It's a very nice concise quick uh, hinge system. Doesn't need to have a lot of weight or space in size. I'll be able to hold a lot of weight because I'm not going to be putting a whole bunch of die cuts and flowers that have been three-dimensionally created and seam binding and a million things. You can put a little bit in the book but essentially this is mainly just to hold the cards. So I'm just wanting to get it assembled. I'm not treating it like it's a fancy photo mini album. It's my little keepsake. But I was thinking of how many different things you could use this for and it made me think of some of my older scrapbooks from when I was young and how many birthday and anniversary cards over the years I would have liked to have just had in one place, nice and neat, so you could flip through a book and take a look at them. Not stuffed in a box, not wrapped with elastic rubber bands and all that kind of stuff, but just some nice things that you can put up on a bookshelf that look pretty that every so often you could take down or you could share with people or you could use for ideas when you're creating your own books. So we've reached the end. I have all of my layers of pages and this hinge I'm opening up instead of bending over and continuing and I'm going to put the last page on the inside. So there it is. The front and the back are different because the outside of the hinge will be on the outside of the page. See? That hinge now encompasses rather than the page being put on the top. And then burnish that down and make sure it's good and sealed because this is the page that will be glued to the back inside cover to create your book. So once I'm sure that I have this all set and I'm even writing the word back there so that we don't get confused and flip anything. Not that it would make a difference at this point 
they're all just black covers and black pages but just to keep uh, some sensibility as we're moving along here I'm back to the front and I'm gonna get my cover and I'm gonna glue the cover and the front page together by covering the entire page including that little hinge that's folded over the outside rather than tucked in put down plenty of glue and again you can be as perfect as you want with placing the book onto your cover as it it, it all depends on how picky you want to be I'm not being very picky but you do want to make sure that you have the top and the bottom and the left with the spacing that you want and very careful to have the whole book right on the right side, the right edge. So on the right side I'm making sure that the edge of the book goes to the edge of the cover leaving a border on the top, left, and bottom. So they even up right on the edge. And that'll keep my seam, my binding and my book cover um, on the back side all aligned. Then I'm just going to go inside and make sure that that paper really is sealed down burnish it with my hand use your use your bone folder whatever you want try to keep it nice and flat keep the bubbles out you're going to be putting your designer paper so now we're starting to get to the surface that will be shown and as you can see the parts that were messy inside are no longer seeable so that's good and there's all the pages and we're gonna make sure that's good and glued and head to the back where now I'm gonna do basically the same thing I'm gonna start with the glue on the actual page there's the outside last hinge that folded around wrapped around rather than putting a page on top it actually uh, has the page inside of it and I'm going to glue that up well and then come back and very carefully try to even up my front cover and my back cover keeping the right hand side where the hinges and the binding and everything are I'm going to try to keep that very flat all the front the hinges and the back nice and even and very careful that the front and back cover of course are lined up so maybe stand it up and you know jiggle it around see right there that's right up against the edge where there's actually a little bit of a frame on the other three parts make sure that I'm burnishing burnishing the inside once again Come back with your bone folder clean up your glue and essentially you are done with creating your book with all of its pages so it's pretty the core of it pretty much done you just now can kind of have some fun putting your decor and your designer papers on it and enjoying yourself now the designer paper size is a little bit um, imperfect uh, I don't really care that I'm moving it more to the right to create I don't know about an eighth of an inch or so around the top right and bottom but there's a little bit more on the left uh, one thing I did leave out besides the ribbon is creating that last piece of paper that wraps around that really creates your outside binding cover and it's just going to be again eight the eight inches or the the length the height of your cover a piece of paper cut to the height of your cover uh, and as wide as you want it how much do you want it to wrap around from the front to the back but this is exactly where I should have put the ribbon underneath my front cover and then of course underneath my back cover and uh, I wouldn't have had to make a disclaimer on that at any rate it worked out okay and now I'm putting the inside cover decorate decorative papers so I have some of the pretty cardinals from Heartfelt Creations um, oh, what did I forget the name of it there's so many beautiful papers and my brain's getting so old I can't keep them all listed in my head but um, another one of the beautiful papers from Heartfelt I decided to have the paper and the front inside cover and the back inside cover match just like the front cover and the back match which means that when I go to put my first page paper on they won't exactly match up uh, left to right but they will from then on so there you go I have my inside front and back covered all scored and cut and glued and ready to go and I'm just gonna start decorating the pages so these were cut just slightly smaller than the pages themselves and now I can place them in here and 
come back and start putting my cards in. Again, uh, remember that when you have finished all of your book and you want to start decorating it, that you have to cover that um, the binding with a piece of paper. I would say it's about four or five inches wide by the same height as your covers and you just glue some of it onto the back, wrap it around the binding and then glue some of it onto the front and that's when I started to add the red ribbon over the top. So sorry I didn't get that in here but at least the core of how to make the book and how you put your pages in and all that stuff. Really a quick project. I liked doing this because it really didn't take too too much time I didn't have to be really picky about it. You could add flaps, you could do all kinds of things with your cards, making them into pockets and fussy cutting them and giving them all kinds of little tricks and interactive things, but I chose to keep it simple and just get my book made and get my cards in. Maybe next year I'll go for all the fancy stuff, but for right now I've got a book to put my cards in. Thank you for sticking it out and watching the entire video. And I'd love to see your version of the way that you keep your cards from year to year, especially now that they are coming, so many of them, as photos of family and friends, and that many people do make cards, and we have handcrafted work being sent through the mail. It's, I think, even more important these days to create something that you can keep them in and put them on a shelf and have all your memories lined up. I'll probably make another one because we need them for birthdays and anniversaries and all those kinds of things too. It's actually a shame that I threw out the ones that I had over the past years. And I'm thinking of other ways I might use this book because it's just such a really good go-to scrappy type of book. And it allows us to use all of our favorite papers so that we can see them. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging in there, and I hope you have a great weekend coming up. And until next time, this is Kathy from Huckle. Oh, don't forget, Heartfelt Creations next Wednesday. That's the release. Pansies, beautiful. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.